Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back office. I'm continuing my heater project. The idea of my keyboard heater. And I sort of um, did a little bit of research and actually these things do exist in real life. People use them apparently for heating up things like telescopes of all things because they don't want any uh, dew forming on the lenses and whatnot. So those though are actually quite flexible because what they do is they, they kind of build the resistor ladder like uh, you know I described last time but they build them in a strip so I'm just going to maybe just show you with some of these bits I have here. So imagine you just get two pieces of uh, sturdy, sturdy wire, maybe some insulation wire and you lay them in two parallel rows. So imagine two of these sort of metal -y looking things and then literally you just take the resistors like that and space them out as you know to the required density you know depends on what your power requirements are and you solder them uh, to the two flexible wires then two uh, power wires go on and then that's it you put power to the uh, rails and then they illuminate so you can see here I've got a bit of copper which is a bit like my uh, a bus wire but that's because I'm, I'm kind of making something different. I, I don't need it to be flexible for my idea. Mine was just a keyboard warmer. And I don't really know what I want to, how many resistors and all this sort of stuff. I'm not, I'm not being good with the old calculator. And so I'm not really that interested in the math. I just want some heat coming out. But uh, you boys and girls playing along at home who are a lot more serious than me um, and know your stuff will be able to easily calculate the uh, power of this. So these are 330 ohm resistors. And I'm going to put, I don't know, four, five, six, seven, I think an eight. Let's put eight, so we've got eight. Ah, just finding the end here. So I'm prepared to sacrifice eight in my experiment. And I'll show you how I'm gonna do this. So that, that'll work out nicely. Just look in there. In fact, you could use a ruler and do it properly, but uh, hey back office isn't about isn't about perfection it's about getting it done hey so let's put that along there you can see I'm kind of I'm kind of using my eyeballs to sort of work out whether or not that is where I want them so that's kind of what I got in mind and I want them to I'm going to pull them away from the edge just a tiny bit and you'll see why I want a, a bit of a gap there and I'm not sure how much of a gap and I'm not going to do it on one, I'm going to solder them all the same gap. So if I'm wrong with this gap, my idea will fail. And then I'll have wasted all my time. But that's absolutely fine. That's all I want to, want to get on there. Clean the solder nine. So I'm going to see if I can get this to stay there where I want it. Yes. I think this one's moved already. That's fine. It's more of an art than a science. Ah, oh, stay boy. That's it. Oh, that's good. I got a good old um, purchase on that resistor. Ray purchase. Let's get that one look like it could do with a bit more. There we go, almost there. See, it's quick, isn't it? That one looks like he slipped down a bit, so put him back. I'm saying it's a he, could be a she. I don't know if resistors are male or female, or maybe just a combination of both. Let's get another one here. Good. Now we've got these couple that need to be adjusted. So I was complaining before about the heat, but I'm actually quite warm now. I'm still kind of holding, holding me phalanges, but uh, I've uh, warmed up. Once you turn on the old uh, soldering equipment and the lights and your bench, soon gets toasty. It's just that sitting at that computer, not using your hands, that's the problem. Or only using your hands, not using this to your body. Now, I haven't found my side cutters. I think they've just gone now. Oh, I have found my tweezers, though, my good tweezers. Um, so what I'm going to do is just use these... El Horrible side cutters, but I say El Horrible, they're kind of the Rolson special, but you know, 
they've persisted. They're probably over 10 years old, so uh, I can't complain too much. They've definitely lasted more than expected. So the magic trick is this is double-sided uh, board. So my idea was a double-sided PCB. I should be able to put the resistor on the edge like that and then bend the wire through. And you can, look, there you go, there's one, two, so bear with me, it's a bit like plating metal. That sounds like a great name for an album, doesn't it? Plating metal by live. Now we're gonna be cooking. We're cooking with gas. Or in this case, electricity. This could be a great little heater though, isn't it? You could make this in all sorts of shapes. I bet you could make one in rows and then you could mount that to a PC fan. And then you would have, oh, that one's a bit too short. That's okay. Let's touch up this guy because he's, uh, he's not being flexible enough for our requirements. Come on. I will save you. Don't worry. I will save you. Hooray. You're a champ. You're a real champ. There we go. So I'm just going to push these down like that. So they're all quite neatly hard to see right there on the edge sitting there like little ants now this should take no effort to solder these guys because they're going nowhere nobody touched nothing mmm fumey there's probably a more useful way if you've got a PCB material circuit board you've got double-sided board you can spend a lot of time trying to etch your own PCBs to make um, circuits or whatever or just do it this way just use it as a construction material I think that's more fun definitely more satisfying <sighs> that smoke away get that smoke out me lungs lad there we go there we go it feels really hot and I haven't even plugged it in yet <laughs> mm. This could be also, you could put this inside a little test tube and make, ow, like a, a vivarium, vivarium heater. I think that's what you call them. Is that right for heat, cooking your snakes, heating your snakes up? V -v vivarium heater. I might even uh, change the title of this video to a vivarium heater or whatever you call it because uh, I'll probably get more views. People going, oh, yes, that's how I want to heat my vivarium. Because I don't want to pay the one pound for that heater. I'm going to build one that's cost me 10 hours worth of work. Nice. And then just on the other side. So polarity is not an issue, of course. There's no diodes or transistors or complicated componentry here. Nice, nice, we're ready to test it. So the only thing we need to do is actually just hook the ends of the wires up to our power supply. And we determined last time that 12 volts seemed to be the volts, ow, 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 still hot, the volts with the most go. And they're sort of quite a convenient uh, voltage to have because it's something that you can easily obtain, really. And uh, I'm gonna probably mess around with that flare again, but I wanna make sure though that this thing is, is chooching. It's chuchin and uh, gonna wang us up to 12 volts on our bench power supply and I'm gonna turn it on. So we're using 297 milliamps. So this should be nice and toasty, but dare I test it. It's weird, without actually um, the optical, the flare thing, it's very hard to tell how some hot something is. Um, I've got some of this um, Purell hygienic hand rub. We can see what happens to some hand rub. Mm. Um, not much, to be honest with you. <laughs> I was expecting a dramatic pss, fizzle. Ah, ooh, 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 that's nice though. It is nice and warm. Mm. Actually, yeah, that's good. That's a good warmth. A good warming feeling. I'll just rub some of this Purell on it to make sure this is sanitized now so you can put it in all sorts of places. Um, yeah, that's it's kind of. I think it would burn you after a while, I'll put it that way. It's not um, 
it's not cold but it's not it's not ridiculous I, I i don't know it's you wouldn't want to hold it it's very much localized points of heat i think you could put that in something to try to distribute it more but let me go and get the uh flare and we'll actually measure it. right you can see the strip here and you can see in the ow 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 flare the thermal infrared imager that the leds appear i say leds they're not leds they're resistors they're just glowing hot are uh, getting around 70 degrees C. That's what we're seeing there, 71 degrees. So that's pretty much there, what we saw before when we were testing them using 300 milliamps. Milliamps, not milliamps. So, ow, 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 ow. Yeah, that does feel hot though. It feels, it feels, ooh, ooh. In fact, look at my hand. Is that a string on? Ah, yeah, you can see that leaves a, leaves a dent. So, um, now let's see if it's feasible to, to do something with my keyboard. So I've got my keyboard here, which we could see is about 18, 17 degrees C, and I'm gonna leave that just sat on it. I'm not gonna put the little feeties up. It's just gonna sit directly on that strip, sitting there ever so nicely. I do apologize that the flare camera is slightly offset, but you know, that's just how we have to roll sometimes. Can't always get these things quite where we wanna, oh, I might try, I might try. Let me just give a little bit of a go. One more go. Oh, look at that. Nice. So let's see how it fares. We'll come back in a few few minutes. It's been precisely 10 minutes now. And I can see on the flare already that it is starting to look a little bit warmer in this region. Just to give you an idea of how sensitive these things are, look, I'm just going to hold the, hold the delete key down for three seconds. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. You can see where I've been. Now the camera itself does have, you can see there's an outline of the keyboard. There is a little bit of a weird uh, parallax thing you can set. And let's have a go, I've not even tried that. Ooh. So the idea is you can get the heat map to match correctly. So if I push the key down, I should be able to move the picture of the camera there we go so you can move the non-thermal camera down so it all matches up so you can see now this is definitely the region where most heat's coming through and i'm just going to tilt this slightly so we can i'll move this into the range so we can see where it's what it's getting to it's about 30 degrees on that key but let's see mm. it's not feeling massively hot though at 30 degrees if you see my hand it's 37 so it needs a bit more time but it definitely doesn't feel cold it did feel cold before but now it feels um quite warm so i'm going to flip it over and let's have a look at its bottom oh yes there's the issue 64 degrees ouch yeah that feels lovely lovely and toasty but it cools down pretty quick let's see what that says yeah see i cooled it down with my hand there sucking out all its its heat there and there's our uh, our little bar. So yeah, it does the trick. It certainly heats heats things up. If you want it to be a, a keyboard heater, though, I would suggest you'd have to build it inside. You know, mount it as close to the keys as you can, and then hope, of course, that it doesn't um, melt the membrane or anything. Look, it looks it looks really dramatic in the heat image, like a lightsaber. Now another use for this, though. Ow. <laughs> a slightly more serious use is it would be nice you could use it to heat your coffee so if you've got one of those mugs which is sort of based on a sort of thermosy type technology i wonder if you could slip this in take the foot off the bottom off the mug and slide it up the side and then put a jack on the uh, mug and then you could give it a little um, you know 400 milliamp 500 milliamp power supply be more than enough just to sort of get a bit of juice going and then you could keep your coffee uh, warm but yeah, that's a good experiment. Maybe I might make a resin enclosure for this so it's a more experimenty block and dissipates the heat a little bit. It's a bit too hot to touch on those little point sources. Now I'll just put it under the flare one last time. And it does look to be, it's running near 60 degrees on those. Toasty. So yeah, please let me know if you can think of any uses for that. And uh, if you, uh, have made one or have used it to keep something warm maybe your steering wheel in your car could work quite well and it's even a bit flexy in that sort of direction so you could ow. 
It would definitely work in a car, by the way, at 12 volts. Just make sure you fuse it nicely. Comments down below. Please tweet, like, sh share, share, and as ever, thank you for watching. Yeah. <laughs>